I want to buy a copy of Bone Storm. Here's 99 cents. Huh. Allow me to summarize the proposed transaction. You wish to purchase Bone Storm for 99 cents. Net profit to me, negative 59 dollars. Oh, oh, please take my 59 dollars. I don't want it. It's yours. It, it, it. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's time for the eighth edition of Slabbed and Raw, soon to be live on Thinking Critical YouTube. But there will be two more recorded sessions, and then we will be live on the channel every Sunday. But that is uh, in the future. Today, we're going to be talking about an array of a topic uh, of issues. First up, we're going to be talking about the comic book collecting apps that are that are out there. What's the what are the best ones? What are the pluses and minuses for all of them? What are they best used for? Uh, whether you got to pay for them, stuff like that. We got a couple other topics uh, to get to, like uh, slab and comics, stuff like that. You know the stuff we like to talk about, but uh, should be fun. We got a great panel, obviously here. The co-host of Slabbed and Raw from Parts Unknown, Pele. What up? Oh, uh, here in Tennessee, beautiful mountains of East Tennessee. Uh, we uh, yeah, there's a lot of weird shit going on in the in the collecting community and i'm going to kind of brush on that too and uh, that'll fit in one of our our categories that we have coming forward and uh yeah yeah really excited to talk about this stuff this weekend awesome next up we've got live from berkeley california the man behind well half of the man behind fantastic comics yule carter how you doing i'm wonderful um pretty good comics that came out this week well there were a couple of really good sellers i should say um <laughs> That's not what we talk about here. That's, that's <laughs> the wrong that's show. Yeah, it's good. Actually, though. maybe one of those is a comic you might want. Anyway, I think Wes just called Yule half a man. I, yeah, his brother. I'm, half the other half. I'm like, uh, I'm like uh, the little guy in Game of Thrones. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Peter can't Dinklage. Think his name. Oh my goodness. I can't, Tyrion? What, what's his Tyrion? Yeah. Half man, I love that. That's my favorite thing from the books, and they 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 they, they, they like sign of respect. Half man. And last but not least, is the habitual line stepper himself, Doc. What up, buddy? Ah, oh, not much, man. It's a wonderful Sunday morning. Well, it's a wonderful day whenever this gets recorded, and uh, looking forward to talking about this. This is this is always one that's really fun for me. It is fun. Let's get into. It. We're going to talk about the best comic book apps. We've heard uh, people have asked us what app, which apps they should be using. We've got well four big apps we're going to talk about. Another one's more of a service. We got to talk about the big one first. I imagine Yule and Pele see this every week. The guy comes in with this key collector app open, looking to uh, score some good deals, you know, in your back issue bins and whatnot, hoping to get one over on on the uh, on the comic shop owners. Key collector app is it really? It's a driving force in comic book collecting now, Pele. Yeah, it's uh, that's that's absolutely true. Uh, you get uh, you know the guys that come in and they're you know they've got their nose glued to their phone and they're they're looking through. Oh, is that is that a hot one? Is that you know? And they're digging through the the bargain bins trying to find you know that minor key that's worth six bucks that they can pick up for a dollar and you know and that's fun. You know that, that's fun to do. You know you've got. You know, it, it's a little bit of an Easter egg hunt kind of situation, but uh, I mean, granted, you're rarely going to find a major diamond in the rough. But uh, but you know, that's that's not really part of the hobby. That's just luck, you know. But hustling the boxes and working with them and and finding the new stuff that's you know that's newly become hot that that is cool. That is a lot of fun to do. I've I've done it many times myself. So, Yule, when you think about Key Collector, there are a lot of things that go into that. There's a lot of rumors and stuff. It's not just what's going on in comic collecting. It, it's it, taking in information just from entertainment itself. When these characters are finally going to make it to other mediums and become you know, uh, a little bit more popular. I have learned a lot more about my, especially in Marvel, uh, about a first appearances and characters doing things that I thought I should have known <laughs> or probably never thought I should know. And these things are being brought up, key collectors, like, yeah, this is being introduced in this television show. And all of a sudden, you know, that first appearance of the nanny is important in whatever <laughs> comic it was, you know. <laughs> and it's like, like you said, man, people on their phones always going through... 
it's a little bit upsetting when it's people going through their phones for the new rack. I mean, it is right there in front of you. You can't decide for yourself. But, you know, you can't just buy every new number one that came out that week like we used to do in the old days. Uh, you know, that type of stuff. But um, overall, it's it, I like it. I like the fact that it gets people interested and excited. And, uh, yeah, um, key collector, it's all right. <laughs> all right, Doc. You are the, the more cynical person of the group here. Key Collector has some positives, some negatives. Can you go over some of the bases of those? What um, you can expect from Key Collector. What it's good for, what what it's not good for. Yeah, it's um well what it's good for is kind of, you know, a lot of the things that Pele and you already covered. You know, what's gonna be hot, what's what's trending up, what's trending down. Um, what it's not good for is keeping track of your collection. I, I really don't like it from that feature. Um, you know, you can you can put in, you know, yes, I have this. I have it in this grade or that grade. Um, I have it just high, mid, low grade. Um, I want it. Um, you know, so you can, you can use it that way. But it, it's not very good, in my opinion, at least from a tracking perspective. Uh, sense. But what it is good for, in my opinion, is finding stuff that you don't, especially when you're going through your own collection um, or you're trying to fill out a run to know what you can expect to get bent over when you're buying. Yeah, uh, and it's and good it, for awareness. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it really it, is. Um, like, like if I'm going and trying to fill in my um, like some obscure like Mr. and Mrs. X run. You know, it's not really a terribly important run, but for some reason, issue three is like twelve dollars, where all the rest of them can basically be found in the dollar. Um, and, and sometimes you won't really even recognize that, and you're like sitting there going, "Like, why in the hell can't I find this goddamn book?" And then you find out, "Oh, that one's the hard." Um, so it is good for that. Like, you can you can kind of plan your purchasing and your. Um, you, you can plan everything a little bit better. Yeah, I like the, right. they have articles that come out, you know, like daily practically. And uh, the paid app version of it, uh, you get access to more articles. You get access to the information a few days quicker. How much and, is the paid app? People want uh, to know. It's like, I think it's like $10 a month or $8 a month or something like that. It's very, it's, it's not ridiculous. But uh, it's not really like dirt cheap either. So, hundred twenty dollars well, a year. As a store owner, you have to have it now because you <laughs> got to know what other people are looking at. You know, yeah. for the longest time, I fought against it, and you know, I just you know, you can only rebel so long before you realize, you know, it's not even joining; it's realizing you're getting screwed, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or potentially, you know, um, one of the so things. Is Oh, do you want to know a negative? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So a negative is, are they driving prices? Do they there have some vested interest in what they're pushing? Uh, so many, I, I saw a YouTube creator, not even like, you know, someone that's creating anything other than YouTube videos. They have an alternate cover for a comic book coming out, you know, and I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even do it for my store personally. <laughs> I think it's crazy. I don't but, know if they do it just for to to boost the for you know that vested in that type of vested interest, but just the overall market being extremely hot helps them. Mm -hmm. because, well, I mean, if I'm just giving that comic away just for a sub or what, or for my viewers, uh, if I look at it monetarily, and these are actual real viewers that are going to be like coming back and getting something, it's a good investment. I mean, it's a real cheap investment, actually. Um, and you got some extra comics that you could break over somebody on eBay with. <laughs> I was a key collector is almost a must-have if you're a comic book collector, right? Yeah, yeah. and the cheap and the and the free version is good enough. Uh, All right, yeah, so let's. The free version is pretty good, but it's only two bucks a month. I was just looking. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was more. Than no, that. it's, it's two it's, bucks a it's, month. Is it's a dollar ninety nine. That's reasonable. That's you reasonable. gotta you gotta pay the the full way if you're looking at it for any reason. You might as well pay the two bucks. You're yeah. you're ripping okay. yourself okay. off. Okay, that's now. fair. I got it confused with something else. <laughs> All so. right, next app. Next app is Comic Book Realm. All right, you. What the hell is Comic Book Realm? I have no idea. I've never that's, done Comic Book Realm. 
that's mine. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's a site and an app. Uh, the uh, the app is basically the same as going to the web page, pretty much. Uh, but it does have a barcode reader, you know, which allows you to scan in your new your new stands, uh, which is really cool. Because um, if you, if you're like me and you're sitting there going through hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of books from the seventies or something, you just ding 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 ding. But uh, the uh, it's a great it's a great resource because it's tied directly to their price guide. Uh, you can put in any of the granular grades that you want to for what it is. You can put a photograph of the, your particular book in there with it. Uh, in that respect, it's very similar to the other, you know, like uh, CLZ and others. But uh, the it's a one time fee for the app, and then you know other, there's no other charge. Uh, you can track all the books you want. You know, for the for the one time fee. And so this with the app, app is for for maintaining an awareness of your collection, like what what you have, how many copies, and whatnot, what your you know what your barcodes are and stuff. Yeah, and a community. There's the forums and stuff like that. You can direct access through the app, and you can communicate with other collectors and find out you know if they have something or you know trade amongst yourselves. You know, stuff. It's pretty good. Uh, that's the one, I, that's the one I personally use for my because the database is uh, is a standard is a standard you know DBase platform so you know I can I can just plug that in export my, it yep you can do exports yeah. directly and import directly so that's mm. that's that's what I like about it very nice go ahead doc I've <clears throat> I played with uh, comic book realm a little bit now granted it was the older version before they actually entered the uh, mobile uh, device market when it was still like you had to literally buy a friggin' CD. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it, it was probably about eight or 10 years ago. They hadn't really jumped into the phone and tablet market. Um, and you could do the download or you could literally get it on a friggin' CD, like an old AOL disc. And um I didn't really like it. I thought it was, I thought some of the features were a little questionable, but I haven't really played with it in the last few years. So if they've kind of jumped into the much more mobile, is it, um, are they doing any sort of crowdsourcing with the database or? The, I the, know, it, well, it's, it's, a uh, it's a standard, you know, it's standard, uh, open da- database compatible. So, okay. So people can add additional information and yeah. then it goes you have through to be like approved. a moderator. Yeah, you have to have, you can add comments and stuff like that and information about the books. You just have to have that comment approved. Okay. What about taking stuff from other place sources? Is that a possibility? Um, like I have another app already, you know, am I just gonna have to go and like re- re-enter everything if I were to do comic book realm? It, unless there is a database translate, you know, like you have some type of translation key or something like that, you can run it through. Uh, but uh, usually, no, they're pretty proprietary. That's the one thing I think. There's like uh, once you like start working on whatever you're paying with, you know, you kind of like you're loyal yeah. because can you import all a, that an work. Excel document though? You know, I no. think you might. Oh, you can't. No, you can't with you okay. can't with it's it it'll it'll work with the uh, with with the like I said the open document format. I mean the open DBase format, but it won't. Uh, yeah, I don't think it works with Excel. Hmm. But I, Excel is actually not a bad tracking situation. Excel is uh, the easiest lot thing in the world to manipulate. You can make anything fit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know a lot of people that that, that uh, organize their collections with just an Excel st- or you know any I kind of spreadsheet. For, I did for a decade. Yeah. yeah. And that was that was the only opinion. problem is is when you get like thousands of comics and then it gets kind of a little slow if you have a slower computer. And then Absolutely. yeah, and then plus the fact that you can't really Excel's not really great for organizing by tables, so if you want to reorganize, you you kind of have to literally just copy and paste lines. Yeah, and putting graphics in, you know, if you want to put an image of your comic into the you can do that, but no, it, it slows it down even more. <laughs> you gotta do text only almost on Excel. Yeah. So we got a couple more um, apps here. We got Comic Base. What the hell's that? Uh, Comic Base is another. It's very similar to Comic Book Realm. I, I've I used it a little bit. Um, it's another one of those. At least for the longest time, I know that it had. Um, it was it was a one time fee system, but it's a little pricey up front. The same way that Comic Book Realm is. It's a little pricey up front. 
Um, well, what's the pricey up front? People I think know. I think it's one forty nine. Um, oh, but, comic book realm is fifteen bucks. Oh, really? For one time. <laughs> okay, they they, they, they used to be like two hundred dollars. No, it, it, it's a uh, fifteen bucks, or you can do the the monthly five dollars, five ninety nine. I think it is for comic book realm. Yeah, and um, now I haven't really messed around with comic base in a while. Um, I, I tried it a few times. It's still not my preferred system um a lot of it you know they have like their they have different tiers of it too they have a they have a free version um uh, but it's only can handle up to like 500 books um but then they have their express version a professional edition and an archive edition and a 4k archive edition honestly i think if you're going with um you know yeah Comic base is, oh, I'm sorry. Their um, archive edition is $300. And if you upgrade, it's $129. But they are still done on CD. It, so it's a local product only. Like you have Ooh. to store it locally. I don't think it'll work for. So you're not going to have good prices on that one. No, you're really not. It, it, it's like the equivalent of the um, of of the Overstreet, but for digital, you know, storage. Yeah. Uh, That's crazy. Well, at least you're not using the cloud, so you can't lose it. Yeah, you you are. You know, it is it is a local <laughs> storage system. It is not cloud-based and you know it's not convenient but if you were if you're managing your 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 uh your collection locally and you're not really buying a lot of stuff and or maybe if you're a shop owner you could use it kind of as a as a storage system for for that uh i don't but I, i'm not a big fan of it yeah, until your hard drive poops out yeah yeah all right, Doc, let's talk about something you are a big fan of. You've oh. talked about it at nauseam on the channel, but I we've did. never talked about it specifically. You've mentioned it here and there. CLZ. Yeah, CLZ is easily, in my opinion, the best um, mobile and you know all-around uh, collection management tool. Um, you know, you can buy it once and it's you're good for you know, the the access to the software forever, as long as you don't um, you know you you can it has integration with it with other services that you get if you have if you maintain a paid membership. But if once you buy the software, you're good forever. It's like fifteen bucks for the software. It's good forever. But what about new comics? Can't update, can it? No, you can still update. You can get okay. access to their cloud based. Uh, it is it is a crowdsourced cloud based uh, database. It's very similar to Comic Book Realm in that regard. Um, you know, you can add comics to it. You can manually add comics. So a lot of the crowdfunded books and stuff like that, hell, a lot of them that are out there, I put in personally and then updated to the up, uploaded to their the, what they call their core which is their central database located on their local servers. And then you download from there. If, if I say my phone craps out, my collection is stored on the cloud in the core. I can go from literally any computer, log in and find my, uh, look at my entire collection. If I, if my phone or my devices crap out, I can just re-download my, uh, my whole collection from their cloud service at any point in time i can make adjustments to things i've i've changed a so is lot it like ways but for comic books sort of yeah okay. it, 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 it it you know ways where you can crowdsource where you know hazards are where um you know the cops are sitting you you could you could add you yeah, can you add can that roads if they change yep yeah you can um it's my my roommate she's a librarian and she loves this they they make multiple collectors 
the collector's brand makes multiple apps. They have one for like DVDs, one for book books, one for comics. And, but I use the comics one. Great. She said it's one of the best, um, one of the best overall archival tools that she's used for books or um, comics that is out there, period. Mm -hmm. Now that the, it in for for I've tried it for iPhone and iPad, it's fantastic. Uh, I used to have a little iPad Mini that I could use with it. Uh, and my wife has an iPhone; it works great. Uh, Android's a little bit, a little bit of a problem with their scanning tool that they have for for Android is kind of a little buggy. Uh, and I don't think it works quite. The overall, the app doesn't work as well as it does with with uh, iPhone. But it it's still it's still very good. It's still very good. That How much does it cost? It's fourteen ninety nine a year. Yep, fourteen ninety nine a year, or you could pay just fourteen ninety nine the first time around. Never pay again. The only thing you lose if you don't continue your subscription is Go Collect uh, integration. Yeah where so you, you don't have prices a, yeah you don't get the prices that's it and but that's you can still update, only, of course. but you you can still update you can still download you can still add new books to your collection uh you can still access their core database you use your phone as a scanner it will pull up the uh the barcode and it'll find that book it'll add it to your collection you can store it locally you can change things from you, know, you you can categorize your collection you know your in collection what list on order for sale not in collection like say uh <clears throat> say you lent it out to somebody there's a loaner tool in there as well so you can loan if you if you loan your buddy a comic or or a trade paperback or something and you're like wait who the hell did i loan that to they need to now pay us know. for this ad they really do. <laughs> well, they need to integrate it into something else where you can find the stuff that you're looking for in local comic shops. The nearest, you know, uh, option is 75 miles away. I think that that's probably the, the, going to be the next the next step with one of these apps. You got to depend on comic stores to be do. involved in that, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, hey, but what another they, thing I have to work on? Well, <laughs> if you already have a. Um, uh, uh, like an database. on you know a database of your local inventory. Literally, all it would require is whatever your database <laughs> software is, an API that will talk to the the CLZ app or the Comic Book Realm app. It's just an API at that point. That's not that hard as long as you keep your inventory access like up to date. That's. That'd be, yeah, a, that'd be a great how many, sale. How many, yeah, how many store owners really keep their inventories up to date, though? Well, I've got a, uh, you know... I got Back a issues, especially. <laughs> now, now, the issue with CLZ and Android... Uh, Yul, you said you're running an Android. You're yeah, running an Android. I, I, uh, I don't think I've ever really had too much of a problem with the scanner, um, It could for, it, for the most part. Yeah, I wonder if it's a uh, an issue with the like the fractured nature of Android's uh oh, it's a Samsung phone. I mean it's it, it, it's pretty much the largest manufacturer of phones. But the main problem I had was just it, it it's not the fact it didn't work, it's the fact it's slow. It was, hmm. As far as getting that and pulling that information in and using it. And I think it's people complain that it's something to do with the way that Android handles APIs. But uh but maybe maybe it's something that they can get fixed. They said they are working on it. I'm looking at it right now. So uh, maybe it's something that can get fixed in the future. Well, I still, I, overall, I, I find it to be a very good app. When I first got on Twitter, comic book Twitter, I guess, and uh, started like you know listening to y'all talking, one person mentioned CLZ. Maybe it was Doc. I don't know, but I, uh, I jumped on that, took a look at it, and I tried to put in what I thought was an obscure comic book, and uh, it had it. I put a few like fanographics books in, you know, to see if like they had the graphic novels and they did. And although there are times when there isn't something in there, there is more often than not, like you said, crowdfunded comic book stock are in there and probably thanks to you. <laughs> a lot of them are. A lot of them are. But um, I think it's a pretty good app. Um, and I haven't judged it against any of the others, but I'm going to take a look at what uh, Pele was talking about and uh, 
I'll think about it. <laughs> All right, you. What comic book collecting apps do you use? The CLZ and Key Collector are the two. Um, Key All Collector. Right. Pele, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Pele, which ones do you use? Oh gosh, I use this. I use the Comic Book Realm and Go Collect and Key Collector and uh, and uh, the. Uh, Basically, you know, the, the, the things that will tell me the up-to-date graded prices, too, as well as the, uh, the GPA, uh, that seems to have gotten really popular this mm-hmm. year. Uh, everybody wants to look at the GP analysis on a book, you know, because you can see, oh, this last auction was this much, and this last, you know, private it's, sale was this yeah. much. And, and it's really cool for that because the price guides can't keep up right now especially they just cannot keep up with especially the slab pricing uh so you know it's uh it's unfortunate i know that it really annoys the crap out of people because they're like oh, i just want to know what it's worth i want to look at something and see what it's worth but you know i don't know what to tell you you know this hobby's a lot more popular than it used to be <laughs> so it's going to have a lot of growing pains to kind of associate with that yeah. All right, Doc, which, which apps are you using? I use CLZ. I do keep my membership. I started keeping it up to date again, so I do have the Go Collect integration. Uh, I also use Key Collector, um, but I only really use it for minimal amount of inventory tracking, and I use GP analysis. Um, I recently re-updated my membership through them, um, I had let it go for a while because I have been starting to buy some slab books again. And when I have an idea of where I'm at offer wise. So, yeah. GP no analysis com- is important. There are no sure. comic shops on my Island. So I do not use any apps for that stuff that don't need them. So those are, those are four at well, four or five apps that we've talked about. Definitely let us know in the comment section, what apps are you using? Is there an app out there that we didn't even talk about that we need to check out and let people know about as far as comic book collecting? Uh, definitely, it's, it's something that you got to keep an eye on. Everyone's got Key Collector. There looks like there's some options if you want to uh, archive, archive your collection and, and keep track of it. Now let's move on to another topic. You were just getting into it there, Pele, talking about buying slabs. Uh. I don't know. I think a lot of people, when they look at a slab comic, I think they're just... In their minds, they're just paying for the grade, along with the title. Yeah, is that is that the is that all they're paying for? Is it that cynical? No, oh, no. It's the the thing is that when you look at like say a comic that one nine point two compared to another nine point two, uh, let's take Doc's recently purchased nine point oh actually as an example. Uh, he bought uh, was it five eleven X Men Uncanny X Men five eleven. 510, 510. The, SD, the SDCC variant, uh, partial yeah. sketch variant. Yeah, it's an, he got it as a 9.0, and for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why it was a 9.0. So we looked, you know, I had a, you know, I saw a little bit here and there, but not something, you know, to drive down a whole point. So I went and got the grader's notes on it, and yeah, it's had finger bends in the, the grader's notes. There's a corner that was bent, uh, not creased, but bent. Uh, and uh, some spine ticks, you know, and... Uh, that were non-color breaking. Yeah, non-color breaking mm-hmm. spine ticks. And, you know, that's all stuff that can be worked out with the press. Uh, so probably get it to a 9.6 or so, maybe higher. So it's a... Uh, not all comics in a grade are the same. And you can take another 9.0 that's just... It's got five or six color breaking spine ticks. It may have a blunted corner or something like that no pressing in the world's going to fix that you know and it's not the eye appeal isn't as high uh so you know there's a lot more to the grade also you've got like you know is the color off center is the cover off center is it you know is it perfect you know is the page quality and stuff like that you can the spectrum is huge and people that only buy by the grade uh are that's the problem with getting into new comic collecting now is people are just like, oh, well, it's a 9.2, you know, and it's worth this much. Well, maybe not. You know, it. you see 9.2s that present like 9.6s. You know, mm-hmm. you could probably get more for it because of that, because it has better eye appeal. You know, there's a, there's a lot of factors there. So I always tell people, learn to grade. You know, don't rely on, I mean, the it's a good rule of thumb 
to go by that this book is a 9.2 in its present state or it's a 6.0 or it's a 4.0 in its present state but learn to grade that way you know that well this this isn't as bad as this other defect and that way you just use your eyes and see does this book appeal to me more you know it's a uh, there's there's a lot of room there to work with and if you get into pressing and cleaning and stuff like that you can seriously you know improve the value of the certain comic you know maybe later on down the line sell it and upgrade your collection so a lot of it so you need to have there. an eye for what defects that are in in the in the grade that can actually be fixed yeah well, not just that, but books that, you know, that I, like something's wrong with the back cover. Who really looks at the back cover that much? You've got a, you know, like a, like somebody put a drink down on the back cover. Boom, it put, gives it a 5.0, but the front of it looks like a 9.8. Yeah, shit the front happens. Of the book is great. <laughs> yeah, shit happens. You know, weird shit like that happens all the time, you know. That's and, forgivable in that situation, especially with a very expensive comic book. <laughs> but it's got a coffee ring on the back, and you're like, oh, okay, well, that sucks. But the rest of the book looks absolutely amazing. You know, I, bought, I sold a Fantastic Four number 50 not too long ago that had a coffee ring on the back. And you flip it over, and it looked like a beautiful 9.4. Yeah. And all of a sudden now, your 9.4 or your 5.0 is not equal to everybody else's 5.0. Yeah. I guarantee people will pay you 6.0, maybe even 7.0 money just because it's only only the back cover. If the front looks like a 9.8. Yeah. I mean, I sold it as a fine, very fine. I didn't tell them that. I sold. I was honest. I said, this is a, this is a fine. This is a VG fine. You know, it's a five. But... And, uh, you know, it looks like a 9.4. So I worked it out in the middle. And uh, they got a great book. They got a beautiful presenting book. So it's, uh, it's you know, there's I, a lot of work there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of factors involved with, with how that grade is determined. And, you know, there's a, a great deal of expense involved, too. Because people are paying a lot for white page books right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Used to, nobody gave a shit. You know, they didn't care. This has got cream colored pages, tan. As long as the pages weren't breaking apart, you know, and crumbling in your hands, you know, they didn't care. You know, now it's like, oh, it's white pages. Ooh. You know, and suddenly that book is worth 50% more because it has white supple pages, you know. But, because but nerds want to be able to win an argument whoever, whoever has the best comment. That, yeah, we technically have both 9.4s, but mine's white. That, well, there is that. And uh, also, that book is not going, you know, it, it's going to last longer. Uh, it's not been oxidizing, you know, it's not, uh, you know, it's it's just in better physical condition and the colors look more vibrant in the page and stuff like that. You know, there's some, there's some issues as far as presentation with that too. Go ahead, Doc. I was going to say that for me, in addition to buying, uh, yes, I'm buying the comic. Yes, I'm buying the grade. But I'm also buying information. Um, information that I might not already have. Uh, even looking at a book, especially if I'm buying online, there's only so much that, um, you know, photos and scans can give me information wise. So I'm buying the information from the graders' notes that. CGC or CBCS has already put together so that I know what flaws they're seeing. So yeah, I, I'm bu I'm buying information as well. Um, because I can grade perfectly fine if I'm holding the book in my hands. Mm -hmm. I, I trust my grading, to be honest. But if if I'm buying online, uh, you know, having those having that information from the grading company is important and that's that's something else that i'm purchasing because as as pele pointed out that may be an upgradable book that may be a book that there's a flaw that i don't see that i can't i can't figure out what the hell why in the hell are they selling it this cheap and saying that it's only a very good fine um oh okay because the graders notes say this yeah, mm -hmm. you get a, you get the book, and it's like somebody took a needle and poked a needle all the way through 
the book like five or six times and you can actually see daylight when you hold it up to the light i've actually <laughs> seen people i don't like how the hell does that happen somebody just get bored and they're like poking the comic you know <laughs> weird shit like that happens you know it's just it's inexplicable i think it's breen said he had a first issue of of hulk where they shot him in the forehead with a bb he went through all the wow. way through the comic book oh, yeah but he just yeah, was happy that he owned it otherwise he wouldn't be able to afford it <laughs> Yeah, it's just that bizarre shit like that happens. Some kid used it for target practice. Oh, yeah, God. sure. And we drew all over the covers, so I really, <laughs> I apologize to anybody that finds one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had I, I what one thing that pisses me off is, and this 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 is one of the things that really pisses me off about CGC and CBCS and all of. Oh, I thought you were gonna say kids. Any, let me tell you about kids. Uh, let me tell you about kids. Little, little buggers. Uh, no, no, no. What pisses me off about the grading companies, and they all do this, is you get a comp, you get a you get a book, you're gonna find out the grade inf- grader's notes information. It's a nine two or a nine zero or eight five even, and you're like, oh, let's look what the grader's notes are. You go to the grader's notes, nothing. Mm-hmm. They do not write a damn thing down. It's like this book is not perfect. Apparently, it has flaws because it's not a 10. It's not even a 9.8. And there's no notes explaining why it doesn't have, an, why it's not a higher grade. And they just get lazy or the notes get lost or something like that happens. Or maybe they're just in a rush, you know. But, you know, I've, I've had numerous times that I go in and, you know, they say, like, okay, you want to pay for the grader's notes, $5 or $10 or whatever. You know, you pay for the grader's notes and it says grader's notes dot 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 or empty yeah or no just dots dot 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 you know or even worse insert text here (laughs) yeah grader's notes creases where you know what i i think that a lot of those are going to be whenever they do uh whenever they would set up at shows and do on-site grading maybe i'm betting that that's where a lot of those come from it just it just absolutely just burns my ass because it's like okay fine do you get a refund yeah oh yeah yeah you can you can get the customer service say hey i'm not paying i'm not paying five dollars for dot 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 (laughs) you know it's it may just be five bucks but it's the principle of the damn thing you know and uh, oh we're sorry sir you know but then you have to wait for like whatever for the refund but uh you know it's that's that's one of that's one of the things that really irks me about that it's not too common or they just say, you know, light cover, you know, light fingerprints on back cover. You know, it's just. I don't know, apparently, is this something that, that, that if you were a collector, you could do? You could go and find a, a, a comic, maybe it was like a nine or something, but not graded by CGC. Mm. And you look at the notes and you're like, well, there's some, some fixable defects here. If I did this and this, you crack that bad boy open, you, you fix it, then you send it to CGC themselves. So you kind of got it on the cheap. And then you kind of flipped it for even more money. Yeah, that's that was my business model for like two years. You know, I was buying PGX and CBCS slabs, and you know, I was like looking at them at shows and stuff like that, saying, "Oh, that's that's that could probably press out to a nine two, and it's a seven. You know, and I I could buy it, buy the CBCS, crack it out, press it, clean it, you know, send it off, and boom, I made a thousand bucks, or I made five hundred bucks on it." You know, you're also getting a little bit cheaper because it's not CGC graded to begin with. Well, it used to be. Uh, PGX yeah. still does. You still get PGX slabs dirt cheap. But CBCS now, not so much. But uh, even if it's just, even if I've done that with CGC slabs too, you know, where it's like it just needs a CPR and it's it's good to go for, you know, a much higher grade. So and there's a big difference between a 9.0 and a 9.4 and a 9.6. You know, sometimes it can double or triple in value you know just by two grade bumps so and then magical nine eight yeah just ridiculous the, the, oh yeah then it's it's almost always a hundred percent of nine six yeah like it's yeah, we'll take dogs right. yeah. take docs five, uh, x-men 510 again as an example you know as a as a 9.0 it's a 25 it's a 2800 dollars book you know and, and or 20 yeah 2800 dollars book mm-hmm. and doc got it for a really good price already as a 9.0 you know, once it's pressed and cleaned, it gets a nine point six. Boom! That book turns up to seven thousand seventy five hundred bucks. You know, and boom! I, if it gets a nine point eight, it's five it's getting close to five figures, because it's just a super rare book in high grade, in any yeah. grade. Yeah, 
it's it's a super rare book period so you know you you can quickly i mean especially like that's one of the reasons why i bought this book i mean i don't plan on selling it but i that this book staying in my collection for probably as long as i can think of um but i'm looking at it it is upgradable because i did have that extra information Mm -hmm. so that's why i mean if i if i would have bought it if i would have looked and you know as pele's uh just earlier example was it's blunted corners color breaking creases um you know non-fixable stuff then i sit there and go eh do i really want to pay almost market value for a book that can never be improved yeah it's no. plateaued yeah it is that's that is its peak i gotta wait for the market to that shift point. yeah yeah and, and the market does shift this there's, there's nothing wrong with buying fair market value i want people to know that it's Absolutely. always better to pay less but you you when you're talking about investment grade books you know in in lot a whole lot of keys from the bronze silver especially gold air they're investment grade and uh, a lot of keys are and they do appreciate you know six seven ten percent a month a year rather and you know you you know, it may be not linear, you know, it may not go up in value for two or three years, and then it pops up 20% in a year. You know, it's still, you know, going to keep appreciating, you know, following the market. So buying at current market value is not bad a lot of times, and especially in the really hot markets, you know, it could be the best that you can do, so. What about you, Yule? What you about me? Buy- do you even buy slabs? <laughs> I do. I buy personally. I buy slabs when I'm uh, buying online. Just like you know, I mean, I, I don't. I know people. They like to take the risk, and they have a collection that's all over the place and not about condition. And my personal collection, um, I have my readers, and then I have my, uh, you know, anything that goes on the spinner rack, and uh, and then the stuff that goes in boxes and whatnot. And then I have the slab stuff I purchase. I'm gonna eventually eventually i will take all of them out of the slabs and put them in the boxes because the slabs don't mean anything to me other than what the grade is <laughs> mm-hmm. um I, I look at the i look um at the the notes also when i'm purchasing something i definitely uh search and make sure that the that the uh the code is like legit and part of cgc you know yeah. And uh, so I, and it, I don't want to buy a CGC slab from somebody that doesn't put the item number. It's kind of weird yeah. <laughs> that they won't do that. Um, so, you know, search, make sure. Um, I've heard some horror stories about people cracking it, slipping something else in and sending it out. Maybe, you know, that's the thought that was going on. It was just cracked. I'm sorry I didn't mention it. You know, that type of thing. But People wonder why I obscure the, the serial number on a lot of the stuff that, I, you know, a lot of my comics mm-hmm. that I post up because there are counterfeits. There's counterfeiters out there. Mm-hmm. And if that book gets sold and tracked under, you know, somebody counterfeits that number and it gets sold and tracked under that, which one is the real one? You know, then you end up a situation like, you know, what, which one is, you know, you have the counterfeit or do I have the counterfeit? I know mine is real, but you know, we can't sit and compare them. Right. So, you know, it, it might send some, some bad signals during a potential sale at an auction or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, could, could, could affect your auction, your auction most, price. Most people like when they have like an old label, they'll like mention that, uh, kind of so you know that, I mean, I would assume, and you know, obviously there's seller ratings also. Uh, so it's, it's still just always a gamble. I love I mean, the old labels. The whole stories, you know? I love old label stuff because they CGC was a lot more label. conservative. Huh? I got a lot of old label stuff. Yeah, they were a lot more conservative back in the day uh, in grading, pretty much as a rule almost. Uh, at least a like a, a not a full grade, but like a half step or a quarter step. You know, like a nine two is, would actually be you know a nine four today. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of that stuff happened back in the old days. They're a lot more conservative. And that's awesome because, you know, those older books, you know, if you did get them regraded, they would go up. Or uh, you can pay, you know, you can ask for more because, oh, it's an old label. You know, it, it's probably such and such instead of what it what it is, you know, probably higher today. You know, so. But the slabs are better now, right? 
Yeah, the oh, yeah, yeah. You could before you could like you know pry them apart with your fingers and like almost pull the the comic out. You know, especially those old CBCS slabs. They were awful. I could actually take the tabs on the bottom of the thing and with a screwdriver just pop the tabs out, pull the whole book out, use an exacto, cut the mylar sleeve, pull the comic out, put another comic in. You know close it back up to where you don't see the cut in the mylar sleeve slide the whole thing back slide the tabs back together and you can't even tell that the book was tampered with mm. and people did that a lot with those old cbcs slabs and uh you know and you know i, I did that and replaced one like a just as a joke uh replaced a uh, uh i think it was an x-men number x-men number you know 95 or 96 something like that anyway i, I, I replaced it with like uh with the turok dinosaur hunter you know the <laughs> turok you know and then and slid it back in there in the cbcs enclosure made it look absolutely perfect stuck it up there and stuck it up on the wall and people are like what what the <laughs> so yeah Why did you bother doing that <laughs> cbcs made a mistake you know, i was just joking with him but uh I don't know. Speaking of Turok Dinosaur, we're looking for, for value nowadays, Pele. And I say the best value in comics is still looking at that old school Valiant comics in the dollar bits. But obviously, we're having a market correction. We talked about that last week with Comic Link. Mm -hmm. Where should people be looking for for value right now for Value Hunt? Oh, well, man, it's weird stuff going on now. Uh, people are only paying top... I've noticed this lately, and it's been going on for probably about two or three weeks and it's a lot more prevalent now uh people just are not and this is happening not just on it's happening my comic shop it's happening on on ebay it's happening on pretty much you know all of the auction sites that's auction raw books they're just not paying the prices they were for raw books and i think a lot of it has to do with how long it's taken now for cgc to grade and people or people just you know are it's a more lot risk. more leery yeah, there's more risk now involved. Before, they didn't really care as much about the risk because, you know, the market was booming real hot. And now, you know, big, big price adjustments. You know, books that were selling for selling raw for like, you know, 100, $150 have dropped now to like 50, 60 bucks, you know, or you can pick them up, you snap them up, and nobody's even bid on the thing. You know, it's, it's you know, let me pull out a couple of examples of, Michelangelo, Mirage Studios, you know, uh, the number one in the micro series, buck fifty. Uh, this book in a nine point eight goes for about about three hundred three hundred and twenty bucks. All right, I just bought this one. Uh, it's uh, probably about a nine six, the way it is. It, it probably can't be pressed any higher than that. Pay twenty dollars for it off eBay. Mm. You know, as a nine point six, yeah. it sells for one hundred and fifty, hundred and forty, hundred and fifty. And before you couldn't touch this book for less than ninety to a hundred bucks at the peak of the at the peak of the market, and now yeah twenty bucks. Snap! Nobody even bid on the damn thing, so I bought it and bought a whole bunch of you know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the same guy. Nobody bid on any of his auctions, so keep an eye out. The raw market right now is just collapsing, from what I can tell. Do you, is it is it just because of that, or um, maybe like seller ranking or? Maybe just Turtles isn't as popular right now. Well, maybe I know, so. We were just talking to, to Mark Pellegrini, the guy behind Team and T. Um, I can't remember the name of the website. Entity. Mm -hmm. T and T. Team and T. Entity. He was saying, like, uh, Mirage era turtle books that were in the dollar bin like two years ago were like 50 yeah. bucks now. There's like the guy right. super duper hot. Yeah, but, I heard that part of the podcast. You know, it was, yeah. it was, you know, he's right. He's absolutely right. If it was graded, uh, you know, I get that book graded, wait the six, seven months or whatever it's going to take me and uh, get it graded, put it up on the wall. I'll sell it like hotcakes at whatever the fair market value is. It won't won't even take won't even take a, a couple days, you know, but hot, raw right it's now. It's that year wait list. People don't want to wait and take all that risk. And maybe the market's cooled to such a degree that you never even recoup your money anymore. Maybe not. And uh, that yeah. that could you, know, you recoup your money, but it'll take longer than you think, yeah, and you're and you're going to be you're going to be sitting on the book a lot longer than you anticipated. If you're a flipper, you're looking to be flipping your money. You know, you're not yeah. looking to sit on it for three years mm -hmm. while you're waiting for the market to recover. So as the you know as the market's kind of cooled off a little bit, and raw books just 
you know, if you've got graded stuff and you're selling it, you probably don't notice a huge amount of difference, maybe 10%, 20% drop off unless it's really, really hot key. You know, but the raw market is just doing great now. Well, great for great for people that want to buy. For buyers. You know, it's turning into a buyer's market for raw books. And I've noticed that with, with X-Men. I've noticed it with, with even Spider-Man. You know, raw Spider-Mans have dropped dramatically. Looking at the, the, the you know, the final sold sold listings and uh but uh and of course this is not going to affect your comic book shop you know the comic book shops are probably not going to start dropping their raw books that that quickly ebay is you know ebay is where i'm talking about and it's probably not affecting the buy it nows as much yet but it will because people don't want to sit on those books for you know four or five months six months they're going to start dropping their buy it now prices but the auctions that start out at ninety nine cents and and ten dollars and stuff like that, oh, they're feeling it. They're really feeling it right now. The thing about comic stores, though, is that um, as we've talked about, unless they uh, have a, a sign that says that they're going to change the price at the counter, the prices in the bins, you know, often can be a little glacial and changing. So. Yeah. Uh, they might be too high right now, <laughs> or they might not have been changed at all, depending on where you shop. <laughs> that's that's actually really possible because I went to a shop not too long ago, and I uh, went to a different shop I hadn't been to in about probably about a year, and a dude had not changed any of his prices in a year. Mm-hmm. You know, and some of the books were like extremely hot now. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, uh, you know that this is like I pulled it out. I was like, yeah, you know, this is going for like a hundred bucks now, or this is going for five hundred bucks now, and you still have fifty bucks on it. You know, he's like, oh gosh, you know, he's like, here, hand me that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Bailey. Yeah. So if you're a collector, and you've been looking at the the slab prices, and you're like, man, this is ridiculous. You know, I don't even want to be a part of this. Now's the time to maybe go hit some of those eBay uh, auctions up. See if maybe you can get your hands on some high quality. Raw comics, wait the market out. You don't get your your CGC uh, you know uh, subscription that you have. Go get them graded and just wait the time out, and maybe you'll have a pretty valuable collection here in about a year. When well, you, you when it starts to frost over, I think that considering how hot this market was, when it starts to frost over, uh, when it we really feel it because it's not going to happen probably still to the end of the year, uh, we're going to see a lull that's going to be extended. You know, and a lot of the people that were very enamored with the comic book market for its longevity and its, you know, and its really nineties all over again, insane prices. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna it's they're, another they're gonna bubble. like kind of wander away from it, and uh, the core collectors will still be there, the core people that are still wanting to buy books because they love comics. Uh, but you know, we're gonna see a settling, and and I'm excited for that <laughs> because. Uh, <clears throat> ultimately i want comic collectors to be the bulk of who buys comic collections and buys comics because i want them to love what they're doing not just doing it because they can make money you know so they can make a you know quick buck off of it not that there's anything wrong with that as seinfeld would say it, but, there isn't but i mean there's a lot of aspects of uh, of the flippers that it, it look it keeps you on your toes as a retailer or even as a fan it keeps you on your toes like I don't want them to get one over on me. I want to be the one to get one over on them. You know, just that it, it's the little, it's almost like gamesmanship, <laughs> you know? And, um, I think it's a pretty good thing that when this happens, uh, yeah. is that why you say you, you're like, look, look at this, this presents as a nine, eight. I don't care yeah. that it's a five. I, uh, <laughs> I the, the presenting thing. I, I, I laugh. I had a, I had a, an employee. He was big on saying that he's like, I'm like, that's just a fine. And he's all, yeah, but it presents as a very fine or something like that, you know. And it's, okay, very good. Um, so someone's willing to spend more if you uh, if you polish it up just a little bit. You ever seen a seven? You yeah. ever seen a seven zero with white pages like this? Oh so. well, I, I will admit, I'm going to forgive that coffee stain on the cover for those white pages. Those are amazing, immaculate. <laughs> Now the, Man, we're we're all used car salesmen sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to kind of be. You got. You're in the comic book market. You got to polish off your goods and sell them. 
That's a great, uh, definitely. That's what changing bags is all about. <laughs> yeah, put a mylar. You know, you go from the poly to the mylar. Oh, know, yeah. Sometimes you can almost, you know, you can see a 40 per 50 percent increase in them, what you can get for it, you know, just because you improve the way that the comic presents at that point. Yeah. Yeah. It's mylar uh, is very forgiving. It's yeah, like spandex. Sh- no, not like spandex. <laughs> Ooh, no, no, no. The opposite no. of spandex. It's beer gone. I can see you all these in the shop. He's like, you see this TMNT comic? <laughs> the last time I had one of these, five years ago, uh-huh. it lasted about four hours. This one's been up here for 30 minutes. You want to take the chance, you can walk out the door. It's up That's to you. Right. I'm not changing That's, my price. That, in I, fact, that, now that, that I'm that, thinking that, about it, what happened? I'm raising it up $50. The, I, I, I have said that. I have told people, like, you know, I can't guarantee I'm not going to change this price when you leave. It is true. <laughs> it's true. You know, and, and a comic foot and the and the convention floors are, are what's really funny because everything's in Mylar. And because it increases, you know, everything, every comic looks better in Mylar. It so looks it's just shiny. Yeah, it's, it's like, so ooh, beautiful. You know, and everybody's, yeah. You know, shop. Yeah, it's probably like twenty tons of mylar at any at any convention at any given time, but uh, and you can't take it out because you're like, if I take it out and I damage it, mm-hmm. I'm screwed. And the oh, guy why? selling doesn't have time to take it out if it's like you know, unless it's like a really high dollar book. So you just got to kind of okay, well, I can't really tell a whole lot because it's just you know, you just got to wing it sometimes. But uh, they take advantage of that. Now I think about it, I'm taking the comic book down, and I am changing the price. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reminding me how I was comic kids. <laughs> and man, they love to do that shit too. Customers are like, "Oh, you forgot to change the price on this. It's actually $25. oh, they sure do, don't they? It's went up to oh. twenty five, and and you have it marked for fifteen. And it's like, that, I was like, oh, well, congratulations. That's you know, my sign I, now. As long as you don't tell me about it, you get it at that price. <laughs> Otherwise, you're getting changed. <laughs> but, they, and, but, you know, if you play into that, you know, like I said before, putting putting valuable comics mm-hmm. in the bargain bins and stuff like that, you know, you let them, you give them the impression they're getting one over on you. You know, I know it's going for $40. I priced it at 20 on purpose. Yeah, I you know it's like or they find the be like, well I've took you for at least one hundred and eighty dollars in the last three weeks so let's call it <laughs> even that's great <laughs> <laughs> well you know when I fully price something like that is when I'm like I don't want this necessarily to leave the store for you know for cheaper than what I want to sell it for you know I mean this yeah. is like this is like a jewel in this bin right here and uh, I, you got to pay for that jewel this comic has found a home yeah I'd yeah. like to be a permanent home. Whatever they there, price. There's yeah, never yeah. been a buddy of mine was a buddy of mine was saying, Man, you've always priced the Hulk one eighty one so high. You know, because I do. You know, Hulk one eighties and one eighty ones. You know, it's like because I'm like I don't want them to leave. <laughs> I don't want them to leave. I don't care if it's a two point five sitting up on the wall. I'm gonna market it twenty, twenty five percent over fair market value. And he's like, But don't you wanna sell them? I said, Why? They sit there and gain fifteen, twenty percent a year on average. You know, it's like having it's like having the ultimate sales bond, you know, ultimate you know savings bond. You know, it, why would I do that? You know, it's like I'm giving money away just by selling the thing. Right. You know, and you can do that with about giant size X Men number one. You know, any of the early Spider Mans now. You know, you know, Amazing Fantasy fifteen, Fantastic Four forty eight, forty nine. You know, all those books like that. They're just money. They're just money in the bank and. You know, when you sell them, you know, they're not accruing interest for you anymore. <laughs> That's why, so. <clears throat> but getting back to the point of this conversation, which was on value hunting, <laughs> mm-hmm. that that's one of the reasons, but no, 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 you're right. So I'm avoiding keys right now. I, I'm legitimately ah. avoiding because you're finding, I think there's a lot of value out there right now on, I guess, from a card perspective, they'd be considered commons. Um, just your standard, you know, random issue of stuff like raw books, um, you know, ASM books and uh, X Men books, um, Batman. The the non key issues. I think that you, you you're seeing a lot of softening in that market right now. Oh yeah, 
and you can get good value there because for the last few years you try to fill in an asm run good friggin luck every book is like even in like the 500s and 600s there's still eight bucks 12 bucks six bucks for for a 2.99 cover price book that was relatively common and nothing really happened like nothing important happened right but it was i thought that asm had been for a while quite overpriced um the, especially like the non keys i think you're i think there's a lot of value available out there right now same with batman same with um uh x-men same with um and a lot of your 90s um fantastic four and avengers books yeah i will right. say this to the viewers happy hunting happy value hunting going out there and finding some of those raw comics that maybe you could make a little bit of money on put them into your collection love them hold them don't give them away and have some fun with that in your collecting journey i think we've had a good show here today talk about the comic book apps we kind of got into uh, what goes into buying a slab some things to keep in mind because there might be some upgrade ability to your comic book when you have it slabbed and, and you can actually get a little bit more value on it and uh, as well as value hunting we just went through that one Pele, as the co-host of slabbed and raw do you have any final words for the viewers uh yeah don't uh just watch your money man uh right now this like i said it's a transition period and just watch your money keep your mind on your money and your money on your mind because you know what's going what's going on right now except for the super hot shit something's killing the children stray dogs you know all the stuff that's you know stuff that's really really blazing or mcu stuff it the rest of that stuff is coming down especially raw and learn to grade learn to grade and you will get the best deals and learn just get a good price guide app and you'll be doing yourself an incredible service and you know learn it buy those old keys because they're not going to be around forever buy them up now you may never see them again all right doc you got anything to say to the viewers as we wrap this bad boy up we are going live on the youtube channel in two weeks don't forget about that (sighs) I would say um, keep track of your collection. Find an app that works best for you with your ecosystem, whatever service, whatever brand phone or laptop or tablet you have. Use it. Get used to it. Keep track of your stuff. No point in wasting your money buying two and three copies of the same book. That's the point of having these. That way you never have to buy doubles and you're never missing stuff that you you really need. God, I do that so much. You oh. caress that app, you make love to that app, and Damn you guys right. are going to have a great relationship together. And update it. And you don't end up like me going, oh, God, I just ended up with five copies of this. <laughs> All right, Yule, what are your final final words of wisdom? When you're at that comic store, watch your mouth. <laughs> I will upcharge that comic now. Absolutely. <laughs> really, you got a good deal, huh, you mother? Get out of line. <laughs> Everything's negotiable. Up. <laughs> oh, uh, free comic book day is coming up real soon Damn in right. August, right. and there's going to be a few books in there. Uh, Maybe we should talk about that, that next week. Okay. Yeah. Maybe so. Maybe there's definitely good. like the Hulk book, and there's the, yeah, the very I mean, first issue of the offshoot of something skill in the children. There's definitely some ones in there. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So, happy collecting there, too. <laughs> good, good call. Definitely right. get to your comic shop and steal those free comics from all the kids. You don't yes, right. their hands on. They're going to destroy it. The elbows work really well. <laughs> They're yeah. damn pizza fingers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Later, everybody. We'll see you next weekend.